it interconnects not with Freemasonry. Like Joseph said, Freemasonry is pretty innocent and mm. teaches certain things more in a theoric way, like even uh, when you become a 33rd degree, okay, you go through all these knighthoods, but they're not really the knighthoods that you go and take in a church in front of a priest or a bishop or a cardinal. So, but uh, in reality, when you arrive at the 33rd degree, many of these people from time to time get recruited to then become real knights. And so I would like uh, to, Joseph to elaborate on that. Well, as far as in the U.S. like that, that structure, you know, is really that much in place. I mean, do people have parallel membership? It's a possibility, not to my knowledge, and it's not really an area of my expertise, unfortunately. But, you know, maybe in different uh, places like that where there's still like a, a structure uh, for these type of things, then sure. And maybe just not so much in the U.S. as far as my experience goes. We can also say that the Supreme uh, Councils have developed in a different way, and especially in the Latin countries, they're very connected to the Jesuits, as Joseph yeah. knows very well yeah. in South America. They go within the lodges, they participate. So there is a different relation in a, in a country like the USA among, between the Scottish Rite and the Jesuits that there is in Latin countries. In, in Cuba, for example, it's possible that the whole of the 33 Supreme Council of Cuba will be invited by the Pope and will be there because there is a tradition, uh, a link uh, in Latin countries that also is linked to the fact that the, the, the Scottish Rite is linked to the uh, Stuart, to the Jacobin tradition. Uh, you can maybe elaborate more on this, Joseph. Yeah, so there, there's there's a whole like school of thought that says that um, a lot of the Scottish uh, degree system like that was put into place as like a as a Jacobite thesis like that. You know, really uh, conclusively, it's not it's not it's not officially there. But, you know, a lot of this also goes back to, um, you know, it's, it's a debate, really, like even within like scholarship today like that, you know, only now, like in this day and age of the dig digital technology and things that we have and the ability to interface with people, are we able to study all these different degree systems? But, yeah, certainly there's a there's a, you know, Templar veins and stuff like that. A lot of it goes back to Chevalier Ramsey's oration in the 1730s, uh, which, which a lot of people say is what created a lot of the Scottish high degree systems anyways. But, yeah, there's, you know, there, there's veins of these things inside there like that. But as far as conclusively like that, I'm not aware of like inclusive evidence one way or the other. And so really right now, like this is a, it's a period of growth and exploration and, you know, it, it remains to be seen. Joseph, I'm looking in your, uh, in your book right now, it's called um, the secret school of wisdom. And here uh, it, it's among many of the things. Here's the secret instructions for those tasked with recruiting new members to the O, which I, I think means the order. order yeah. yeah. And, um, and mainly it just seems to be you find a guy, you start talking to him, you start trying to steer conversations to certain ways to get him to think, you know, he's better off to be in with a group than out by himself, which kind of goes against, you know, the rugged individualist, uh, I guess, mystique that we have here in the United States. Um, what in, in, I guess, in your, uh, in your book, what, what is probably the, 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 the strangest, most out of the ordinary type of things that the Illuminati does do to get new members. Well, so we're, what you're looking at right there is kind of in the lower levels. I think that's in the uh, novice degrees where you're looking at probably some instructions down there. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, you've got multiple points you can enter as a you can enter the Illuminati. If you have like no experience at all, like you're a young man, maybe between the ages of 15, 18 years old, something like that, you're looking to get a formal education. You know, you're approached in that manner. Um, and so there's there's these all these different procedures and protocols as you go throughout the book that, that show you how they would bring someone like that in. Now, if you have Masonic experience or maybe say you're past 18 years of age or, you know, maybe you're just a very mature 17 year old, you can you can bypass this novice phase. Right. And really in the novice phase, you know, people don't have a lot of interaction except for the person who brings them in, which is their insinuator. And so. Basically, you've got like multiple ways that you can enter the Illuminati. You can enter as a basically as a kid for all intents and purposes, uh, 15 to 18 years old like that. You're groomed really closely. You can enter as an 18 to 25 in the Minerva Assembly. Freemason. Or if you're a Freemason, you can just enter in a Masonic Lodge uh, that's affiliated with the Illuminati. So there's like, you know, there's three separate tracks for ways to get into the Illuminati with three different sets of protocols of ways to approach people. And you see what I'm saying? How it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of nuanced. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely seems nuanced. There's nothing overt like, hey, you want to join this? You know, they open up their jacket and it's a, a pyramid with an eyeball on top of it. Yeah. Just go uh, on in, join the club. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which gets, I guess gets me on our next question. How big is the modern uh, Freemasonry movement compared with uh, the modern Illuminati movement? And how much, I guess, crossbreeding is there? This is a question for both of you guys. 
Okay, do you want to go first, Lee, or do you want me to go first? Uh, well, I would say uh, that maybe I will give a different depiction of the whole thing, probably from yours. So you want to start? Or, um, go ahead, Leo. I, I, you're, you're on camera. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Leo. Okay. So my idea is this. The modern group, first of all, the Illuminati didn't need the same kind of financing as Freemasonry because they always had this, uh, uh, at the time at least, these aristocratic leaders uh, that uh, will always put some money towards this kind of projects, uh, these uh, mecenas, this, this character. But in the modern times, then there are the lobbyists who do the same thing. So basically, uh, secretive groups like this, who are not uh, regular Freemasonry, but are something else, mm -hmm. they finance themselves very well because because they can ask to their members uh, uh, sums like $50,000 a year. Uh, it's like the membership of the Bohemian Club. I mean, these kind of groups are elitist groups. So mm -hmm. of course, uh, they charge people very much for uh, for their membership, like Club 33 does in Disneyland. So I mean, it happens everywhere. That's where so, you get to I drink, mean, right, in Disneyland? <laughs> and Club well, 33. That's where you get to get a beer, I guess. You hang out with Goofy and drink a few beers. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's continue, actually, Leo. Sorry. He's actually a very exclusive club, the Club 33. It is not really like you can find it. I find it by chance uh, in Tokyo, the entrance, and I sneaked in. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it is a very exclusive club. So we can say that uh, though the Adam Weishaupt the line of the Illuminati as such faded out, uh, many other groups adopted these techniques uh, which Joseph is uh, de depicting in the book, which uh, have been very useful to uh, grab new members, to manipulate the power structure, and also to aim for power, which is uh, uh, terrestrial power, money, uh, military power, and all the rest, uh, plotting towards uh, uh, something that we as citizens don't like, and even the average Mason doesn't like. So, of course, we have to uh, distance the two things. This is yeah. uh, what I can say about the, 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 this, uh, this, 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 this whole uh, palavra, as you would say in English. Uh, and I think that Joseph will agree with me that uh, definitely uh, Adam Weishaupt and his bunch were probably less uh, um, uh, sinister, less sinister than the people that we have today uh, going in that kind of circuits, uh, like, for example, the Skull and Bones or other groups. All right. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, Joseph. I, yeah, I was gonna say I totally agree with what he's saying here. Uh, you know, really more to the point that you know, like with as far as like uh, what the Illuminati were doing, you know, they really were trying to basically like raise up humanity and do it through education, right? And so instead of overthrowing governments, it was more like you know, educate the people that surround the people that make influencing decisions in society and influence things that way. So it's like a, a sphere of influence, right? So within that context, they're not controversial. But like I said before, within the context of Freemasonry, that was where they were really doing their most subversive type things. Well, let, what, what about the numbers? Uh, how, how big, like U.S., worldwide, what are, what, what are the numbers we're looking at? Because, uh, you know, these are secret societies. So, I mean, is there a way to even, do they do censuses? Do we know how big these groups are? Well, you hear like numbers like, you know, 5 million, 6 million Freemasons worldwide like that. And I don't know, have any good tables. And I don't think anybody else does really because it's, you know, each like lodge itself like that, like a Grand Lodge of Texas or a Grand, Grand Lodge of Missouri or something like this, you know, they operate independently of each other like that. So it's, you know, the records for the state of Texas, for the state of Missouri, for Italy, for whatever state in Germany that you happen to be in or France and so forth. And there, you know, there's probably good averages and stuff like that. But as far as like uh, the occult groups like that versus like the regular groups like that, it's probably less than like a percent or two of like the total global membership. And so if we say you know five or six million people, like maybe a couple percentage points of that would be the well, darker side. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I can add the one thing that, for example, uh, I was once said by an eminent uh, Masonic historian in England that out of the 400,000 members that the, the craft had uh, there in, in England, uh, and I think in Scotland and in uh, North Ireland, whatever, I mean, only maybe 50 people were really conscious 
of uh, the whole structure and also were knowledgeable and really illuminated. And those 50 people are the ones that count. Here we're not talking about uh, thousands or millions of people to change the world. You only need to have those few people who yeah. are in the right academic circles. They have the right access to the lobbies and they have, of course, the money to do things that may be from some aristocratic background, like we know very well that the United Grand Lodge of England is connected to the English royal family and that the Grand Master is the cousin of the Queen. I mean, and, and everybody in the world bows down to the recognition of the United Grand Lodge of England. Isn't that true, Joseph? Oh, yeah. So a lot of the uh, as far as the U.S. goes and a lot of pretty much most of the uh, what we call like regular Grand Lodges, uh, they recognize authority or some kind of direct ascendancy from, uh, you know, from the United Grand Lodge of England. Now, what was interesting, like this uh, summer, I was doing this uh, work for a policies and studies organization and we were in Paris having a global Masonic conference. And what was funny is uh, one of these speakers there gave a speech on regularity and, uh, you know, it was a French brother. And so to, to paraphrase it, basically, he says that, you know, regularity is BS because, you know, why? Is it that it should come from one place or from another? You know, that's his personal opinion. But as far as what Leo says, that most uh, Grand Lodges track their uh, membership back to the United Grand Lodge of England. That's true. That's, you know, that's that's the standard. Well, I think uh, that's a, a good note to end it on because who was it that said, uh, I think it was John F. Kennedy said, we condemn secret societies and their secret uh, orders and rules. And he was a Catholic. Interestingly enough, now we have the Pope who's a Catholic coming to the United States. Um, I, we're coming to the end of our time. I definitely want to get you guys both on again. This was, I think, just scratching the surface. Uh, you could catch Leo's work. Uh, check out his book at CCC Publishing. And uh, that is cccpublishing.com. If you want to check out Joseph's book, it's all it's on Amazon, The Secret School of Wisdom. At Illum or you could also check it out at IlluminatiRegalia.com. Uh, Leo's book is Pope Francis, The Last Pope. I've barely scratched the surface on the secret school of wisdom. Uh, very interesting. We've been showing you guys footage. Uh, I guess uh, Joseph spent five years of his life um, helping put this together from translations that were done in uh, Bavarian German. And we'll get more into that definitely next time. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. I want to thank you guys for joining us on The Money Bomb. This has been great. Go ahead, Leo. What do you got to say? Yeah, well, I'm coming up in January with a book that will help people that are on the path to understand really the structure with the Confessions of an Illuminati, Volume 1, which also, of course, uh, loads the, the work of Joseph Wages, but wants to uh, go beyond talking only about the base shaft Illuminati and wants to make you understand this complete structure. So I uh, invite you to read it when it comes out. And thank you very much uh, for having me on InfoWars and good luck with Operation Moneybomb. Thank you very much. Joseph, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, I think I think if we do this again, though, we have to do it after midnight again. Maybe we'll do a midnight yeah. to 3 a.m. talk because I think <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that People who get on the radio and listen to stuff late at night really enjoy it. It, it had a very coast to coast vibe to it, um, but a lot more fast pace. You guys are ready to talk and and yeah. ready to, to to share your knowledge with people, and I appreciate that. Appreciate you for coming on. Well, and, thanks uh, for having me, Rob. Yeah. All yeah. right, and uh, that's going to do it for me. I'll be back at eight a.m. with Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to be eight a.m. to eleven a.m. We're going to premiere. Uh, an interview we did with Leo is probably our big documentary. Uh, we're calling it Demonic Possession of the Vatican Exposed. Coming up next is going to be Joe Biggs and Darren McBreen. They're going to be interviewing Larry Pickney to talk about what's going on with Black Lives Matter and these cops being assassinated in COINTELPRO and all things with that. If you want to call up right now, you could talk to different members. Uh, you might even get a hold of David Knight, 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. 3139 or go to Operation Money Bomb. You can, uh, we're, we're at uh, about 439,000, almost 440,000 right now. And we also have some great deals on some products 30% off Survival Shield, 20% off Brain Force. Uh, we still have the 30% off Super Male Vitality up, 20% off Silver Bullet. I think uh, Survival Shield and Silver Bullet are must haves for. Uh, for anything, just your basic health. I use, man, I use them both every day. We got some great auction items too up for sale. There's some original Alex Jones artwork, which you can check out. See if y'all can punch me up. Here's the cord that uh, that the communists tried to take out of Alex's hand. We got an original Infowars.com skateboard that was uh, written by professional skateboarder Jake Nunn. Here is a uh, 
one of our old microphones with the InfoWars mic flag signed by the crew. This is an autographed guitar by Jimmy Vaughn. Uh, we got an autograph poster, dictator poster from Alex Jones. This is a, a Jackson guitar signed by the entire crew here at InfoWars. Uh, that is a, I think that's a 50 caliber bullet signed by Alex Jones. We got some Ted Nugent picks, all kinds of stuff there. Check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. It's only 1 a.m. We are now halfway through the Money Bomb. That means we have.